Hey guys. Hey YouTube. So I'm about to jump into a video topic that I honestly did not prepare that much in advance. My apologies if I'm rambling or if there's not like a thought out structure. Anyway, about a year ago, I was in Au Pair in France in a little suburb outside of Paris called Vézinay. And honestly, it was one of the best years of my life to date. So if you're looking to go to France, first things first, paperwork. The easiest way to go about this is to visit your local consulate and just ask. What I did while I was researching was to go on forums, join Facebook groups, and I found a lot of resources from people who had been through the experience or who were actually going through the experience, which was really cool because you could Skype with people, you could message people on Facebook, you could correspond through email and find out all the information that you wanted to know. Another thing that I think helped me a lot was putting information out there that wasn't necessarily asked of you. Try to have as many documents prepared in advance as possible. And even if your host family doesn't ask, send it over because how much effort you put into the application process translates into the perception of how much professionalism you're ready and willing to put into the job itself. I remember getting my fingerprints taken and sending it off to the FBI to the FBI to get a criminal background check. I think the process took about two weeks. The theme here is to research as much as possible as early as possible because you want to have as many documents collected, prepared, apostolized early on, even if you don't need that, just to send over because it says a lot about you. So initially when I started my search, I was mainly looking on Facebook, just Googling random resources to try and find agencies in Paris and in surrounding areas, not having much luck. And honestly, I was getting a bit discouraged. Anywho, after about a week of searching to no avail, I stumbled upon this great resource called greatopair.com. I would honestly recommend this resource to anyone who's even considering becoming an au pair just because of the amount of people that use this website. I'm not sure the exact numbers, this is not a sponsored video or anything, but in my first week, I must have had like 15 messages with prospective host families who weren't just in the area that I was looking, but they were all over Europe. And it was really exciting to finally have correspondence with real people and real families and see pictures of kids. And that's when I actually got really excited about the whole process. One huge tip that may or may not seem obvious to everyone is that I 100% recommend scheduling a Skype conversation as soon as possible. I know it's nearly impossible to tell what it's like to live with someone from one or two Skype conversations. However, to protect yourself, I would just try and be as honest as possible. Don't try and tell your prospective host families what you think that they want to know. Tell them exactly what you think because the reality is you're living with this family and you honestly become part of the family if you want that. So I chose to enroll in a premium membership, which I think at the time I spent like maybe $70. So worth every penny. I found my host family one week after signing up. The reason for this I feel is because after you input all of the details like the weekly schedule you're looking to have, the duration of the time that you want to be an au pair for, obviously your salary, pay expectations, food, whether you're living in, whether there's a separate apartment accommodation, and also the general lifestyle that you have. It makes it super, super easy to find quick matches. I knew a couple of au pairs who had their host families pay for living accommodations that were not the actual home that the family and kids lived in. I know that that can sound appealing, especially if you're younger and you've never lived on your own. That's like, it, it's crazy to think about doing that in a foreign country that you've never been to before. And it seems like you'd have a lot of freedom and it'd be an amazing experience. And while that's true for some people, in my experience, I feel like if you want to get the full au pair experience, the best way to do that is to have a live-in situation. Why do I say that? One of the biggest things for me was establishing a relationship with the kids. I took on a challenge and I accepted to become part of a family with four children. I remember thinking my primary goal, aside from learning French, was to have a unique relationship with each and every single one of those kids. And honestly, I feel like if I wasn't living with them, that would have never happened because just the sheer amount of time that you spend with the kids when you live together and you cook for them and you're always around, they really do adopt you as an older sibling and there's a certain amount of trust and respect I feel that's built into that process. Long story short, if you have the opportunity to live in, I would absolutely recommend doing that. So another great...
A couple things I love about the website. First of all, it makes it incredibly easy to narrow down and filter the type of result that you're looking for. These are things like your weekly schedule, what days per week you're willing to work, what hours you're looking to work, and you can get extremely specific with the amount of kids, the age range, the language requirements, really anything that you could think of. They make it really easy for you to find quick matches and they basically let you input every detail any prospective host family would want to know about you, which makes the finding process that much quicker. What's really helpful is that the site allows you to upload any certifications that you have like CPR, lifeguard, anything else that could apply to childcare directly to your profile so that anyone who goes on your profile can see that you're really serious about the job and that you've put in effort and you're not just doing this because you're an 18 year old who doesn't know what else to do with their life kind of thing. One of my tips would be to view your profile on whatever agency you choose to sign up with as a serious job resume because essentially that's what it is. It's not a conventional job, but it is something that you're hired for, you have to interview for, and you're getting paid for. So you should treat it with as much professionalism and preparation as you would any other normal job. That being said, it's just like any other job where you're walking into a situation in direct competition with tons of other people who are trying equally hard or harder than you for placement in families. One way to set your profile apart is to fill it out to the T as completely as possible. I'm not coming at you like I had this amazing perfect profile, but in my defense it took me only a week to find the family that I spent a year with and had an amazing year with. In my first week of research I actually made a fake account as a prospective host family, so I framed my profile in a way where I could view other au pairs profiles, which gave me a lot of insight to see the types of pictures that people were posting, what people were saying about themselves, how much detail about the lifestyle that they were giving. A word of caution with the photos, I heard a couple stories from au pairs and also after discussing with my own host family what their expectations were. Be careful with the photos that you choose to put on your profile. I know it's tempting to build it as a Facebook profile and just make yourself look cool and like you know how to have fun. But remember that this is a job interview and you are taking care of someone's children. Especially if this is a live-in situation, you don't want to have photos of yourself drinking, out, dancing. I'm not one to say that any of those things are inherently bad. It's just that they're sort of out of place when you're trying to make yourself seem as professional as possible. So yeah. Fill out your profile to the best of your abilities, answer the questions as honestly as possible, like I said earlier, and be specific. Be as specific as possible with as many different regards to the au pair lifestyle as possible because you really want to give your host family as much information up front so that you don't have to discuss all of those things after the fact. Really for me, the Skype conversation obviously was uncovering more details about what the day-to-day -day expectations would be like, but mostly it was sort of seeing how we vibed because so many of both of our questions had already been answered from each other's profiles. One thing that I saw a lot when I was researching was a lot of host families had a requirement where they wanted you to have one year, two years, five years of experience with childcare specifically. I myself didn't have that, but I framed my profile in a way where I had those same experiences, just not in a childcare setting. So my advice would be if you don't have a specific experience dealing with children, even though I would highly recommend that you do that before being an au pair, is to volunteer. Research local resources to get out there and get involved with your community. A lot of other host families that I talked to said that they didn't like to see familial childcare, meaning if you had a younger brother or sister or if you had a baby cousin live next door and you've taken care of. Uh, for some reason that didn't seem viable to a lot of host families, so I would recommend getting out there in your community, contacting your local library, hospital, after school programs, and finding as many ways as possible to interact with kids in your environment. If you are considering being an au pair, I would recommend, if you're able to, to go for the whole year. I knew a lot of au pairs who regretted their decision to go for six months, even eight months, because they felt like it just went by too quickly. They weren't able to experience all of the things that they wanted to experience. So just speaking from personal experience, it was really honestly about six months in where I finally started to feel completely comfortable with myself and my host family with Paris. The language itself was a huge barrier to get past. So I feel like if I would have cut my year in half, 
I would have been really disappointed. I know for me a huge benefit of staying for the full year is that you really allow yourself time to fully integrate into the culture. That's not just the language, it's making genuine friends, making interactions, really feeling like you've become part of whatever community that you're living in. And that's an amazing thing because after that year period you honestly feel like you have a home there forever. If at any time you choose to go back, you always have that sense of comfort that I'm not sure that you could establish in less time. La langue française. Language courses. So one of the biggest parts of being an au pair is being enrolled in a foreign language course throughout the duration of your being an au pair. This is another one of those topics for negotiation and conversation that I would bring up as soon as possible with your host family to see what the financial considerations are. You don't want to be surprised once you get there to find out that you have to pay your own way through these courses because a lot of them, especially in Paris, can be quite pricey. And honestly, I don't feel that it's fair for host families to expect their au pairs to pay 100% of their way through the courses. On an au pair salary, you're basically spending like half of what you'd be making in the month for your classes. Aside from learning the language itself, being enrolled in a language course when you're abroad is a great way to establish friends, to make connections, and to have experience with locals because most of the teachers were born and raised in whatever country that you're studying in. I was super, super lucky for my host family to have paid my way to go to the ILF, which is the International Language... The Institute French Language. The International French Language. Oh my god. The International French Language Institute. I'll link the website down below. ILF couldn't have been a better experience. It was in a beautiful area, dotted with patisseries, flower shops, everything that you think of when you think of Paris. It was walking distance from a beautiful park. It's called Parc Monceau. The year was divided into three sort of trimesters and you would take an exam for a possible advancement into a higher level French course. And I cycled through three different teachers, all of which I loved. I would recommend this course to anyone. The teachers were phenomenal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Salut Patricia, Tatiana et Aurélie aussi. J'espère que vous allez bien. Honnêtement, j'ai peur de perdre mon français. I get that most people become an au pair to take care of kids, but at the same time, they're not your kids. And in order to really establish a meaningful and trusting and mutually respectful relationship with the family, you also have to put in effort to get to know the parents. I knew au pairs who sort of alienated their family and outside of the rigid hours that they had built and negotiated with their host families, they were never around, they never interacted with the kids and they, they didn't have the desire to build a relationship with the parents. What I found is that if you open yourself up and if you show that you're putting in effort and you're just physically there, everyone in the family that you're with will recognize that. I was really lucky to have a host family that welcomed me with open arms and had a genuine interest in getting to know me and not just expecting things from me. I think the biggest part of being an au pair is understanding and recognizing that it's a two-way street. If you go into it thinking that you're just going to get something out of your host family, it's not going to end up well because it's going to be apparent that you're just there because you want to travel around or you want an easy way to live in another country. But if you show that you're willing to put in work and you genuinely have the desire to build meaningful relationships with the family that you're in, I think you can only go well from there. I don't want to sound like I have all the answers and I definitely don't. I definitely had challenges and struggles and hurdles throughout the year. I think everyone does. I don't think it's possible to live with another family that's not your own for a year and never experience anything that challenges you. The most important thing is mutual respect. That will get you through anything. The question becomes how do you establish this respect with a family of total strangers and kids who know nothing about you? What I recommend is when you first arrive to spend as much time as possible with the family for at least a month. Try not to be selfish with that time. Try to give back as much as possible, staying on the weekends, at least trying to make it for dinner. That first month will determine how the rest of your au pair experience goes. I had a great memory around Easter, which is quite an important holiday in France. It's called Fête des Pâques. La fête qui est la plus importante du christianisme en France. It's basically celebrated by everyone there. My particular host family had a really sweet tradition where they invited all of the family members over to the house that I was staying at and they planned a big Easter egg hunt with everyone. And I just remember being around all of the family members, talking with grandparents on both sides and just feeling like I had become a part of this family. And it sort of hit me like a brick wall. Everyone there welcomed me with open arms. It was honestly amazing because now any time that I want to go back to France, I always have that point of reference and I always have that family which I now call my 
second family to go back to. Free time! As much as I talked about integrating yourself into the family and spending as much time early on really building relationships, if you're there for a year, you will find that you do have ample free time if you have a manageable schedule. And once you fall into a new routine, you won't feel so overwhelmed by adapting to a totally new schedule. I can't speak for every country, but I know that France has 41 UNESCO heritage sites, which means that there's ample opportunity to discover something new each and every weekend. One of the biggest benefits to being an au pair in Paris is that it is an extremely friendly city to students and that's students at all levels, whether you're there at a university, whether you're there just enrolled in a short program like a language institution. There are so many programs specifically catered to helping students, not only with finances, but specific events that are scheduled to help facilitate cultural exchange, meeting friends, and experiencing the city together. When I got my Navigo Pass in the mail, it also came with this card, Les Bons Plans, Basically, it's a whole list of participating businesses that give discounts to students. All you have to do is show up with your card and bam. So yeah, I guess the moral of the story is do your research. Whatever country you're planning on being an au pair in, there is bound to be programs and plans meant to cater to students. One of my favorite parts about living in Paris was how easy it was to get around. I literally took a mega bus 14 hours from Paris to Barcelona for 30 euros. And it was an amazing experience. I was lucky enough that my host family actually paid for the entire year for me to have an unlimited student pass from Navigo. It looks like this. So what this card allows you to do is use any of the metros in the city, which is amazing, especially if you don't live in the center of Paris. If you live on one of the surrounding towns, it's super important that you have one of these cards so that you're never in a position where you're stuck. The RATP schedule can be a bit unpredictable. It's amazingly reliable, but there are times when you're expecting it to run and it's not. I'd recommend downloading an app that has live updates and schedule updates and closures so you're never in a position where it's late at night, you're alone, you have no phone service and no money. So yeah, if you can negotiate with your family to either help you pay or pay for you entirely, I would absolutely bring that up in conversation before you decide to be an au pair with a family because it's just another financial burden that you will have to take on yourself. Speaking of finances, uh, one of the most helpful things to me was having a French bank account. I don't know any of the details about how to get that as a foreigner except for the fact that my host father worked in a bank himself but also had a relationship with a smaller bank outside of Paris. In my first week, my host father was able to open a bank account for me which was exclusively where I was paid, uh, which was really convenient because I could use any of the ATMs. I had an unfortunate experience happen to me where a fake ATM machine stole my card and I was so glad it wasn't my US card because it would take weeks to get a new one. Luckily for me, it was my French card and I just had to go to the bank and I got a card that same day. So in closing, if you play your cards right, being an au pair can be one of the best experiences you'll ever have in your life. I honestly don't feel like there will ever be another time in my life where I feel so free, not only to explore and to learn a new language and to travel, but feeling free to really be yourself and to truly discover yourself and find what it is that makes you unique. After a year of living with a family, one of the craziest things is to be able to look back on the year and realize that you genuinely made an impact in these kids' lives. There's nothing better than knowing that at the end of the day, these kids are happier when you're around versus when you're not. I wish you all the best of luck in your search and feel free to comment down below with any questions that you have or shoot me an email. I'll link my email in the description box below with a bunch of other links. And yeah, as they say in French, à bientôt.